Okay, so in the last video, I drew my network diagram, and what I've done in the meantime while I've been uploading is I've highlighted each of the place names in purple, and I've highlighted the distance in green. Now, in this particular task, you had three different tables to refer to for the, the information. One was about distances, one was about cost, and one was about scenic value, and they relate to different parts of this problem. When I come to do different network diagrams for each of those parts, the network diagram is the same, so that my bits in purple are the same and my arcs are the same, but the numbers will change. So all you've got to do is redraw the same network diagram and then rework out the distances. Now I've got four parts of this task. Okay, the Taupo class want it to be the shortest route between Hamilton and Taupo. The Hamilton Club want a path to connect all the towns. The resulting thing costs the smallest amount. The TRL want the network of paths to connect all the towns. The resulting next would be in one of the greatest scenic value. And the Tokoroa Club have no views apart from they would like to know if they could start and finish by visiting all the towns without repeating a path starting at Tokoroa. So, those are the four things that I actually need to answer and I need to work out which one each one is. Now, clearly, a shortest route between Hamilton and Taupo is a shortest path. That's easy to identify. A Hamilton club where the networks connect all the towns, but it costs the smallest amount, that sounds like a minimum, oops, spelt that incorrectly, min e mum spanning tree and Tira want it to be the same thing that where it connects all the towns but the greatest thing value that's the opposite of minimum spanning tree that's a maximum spanning tree now if you watch the video about minimum spanning tree you'll know a maximum spanning tree is exactly the same, but instead of crossing out the smallest number, or sorry, the largest number for a minimum spanning tree, you cross out the largest number each time. In a maximum spanning tree, you cross out the smallest number every time. And Tokoro, I want to visit every town and start and finish in Tokoro. That's a traversability. So I've got my basic skills that I need to be able to do. So now I'm going to try and do one of those in the two minutes I've got left. And the easiest one to do first is my traversability. Because I need to look at each node and say how many arcs it has. So Hamilton has four arcs. Matamata has three arcs. Cambridge has four arcs. Uh, Tyrrell has four arcs. Tokoroa, one, two, three, four. Taupo, two. Tikiti has one, two, three. Tiawamutu has got one, two, three, four, five, six. And Pyongya has got two. Now straight away I remember my rule for traversability and my rule for traversability is I can have two odd nodes and if I have just two odd nodes I can traverse that network but I have to start at an odd node and I have to finish an odd node. So one thing that I can say is that if I built the, the whole network diagram as it is with all these things it is currently not traversable because you'd have to start at Matamata and finish at Tikiti for that to be true or start at Kitty and finish at Matamata. Once I've gone through some of my other parts I could then relook at the traversability net idea and then say is that now traversable with starting and finishing at Tokoro. So you know there's different ways of viewing this and it depends on how you do it. On the basic level achieved, this is not traversable currently. 